Number 65. Using the bond energies in Table 7.2, determine the approximate enthalpy change for each of the following reactions. And then we have a combustion reaction. Ooh, C2H4, uh, which is ethene, plus three O2s will yield two carbon dioxides, which are CO2, and two waters, uh, water vapor, which is H2O gas. Okay, so the idea of this question is we just need to find out the approximate, not exact, enthalpy change. Now, remember, enthalpy is a H value, right? And the change is a delta value. So at any change in chemistry, physics, math, it's this like little triangle that's delta, and then enthalpy is the H. I always remembered this when I was starting to learn this material, is that uh, H in enthalpy goes with H, because I was having a, a little hard time remembering enthalpy versus entropy. And then there's another H, because enthalpy, delta H, it all s comes back to the heat. So there's the last H. So delta H, which is enthalpy, is always talking about the heat energy, the amount of energy that's either going to be released in the form of heat or absorbed in the form of heat. And that's what we have to figure out. But this question says that we can't go back in the, uh, you know, in the appendix of a textbook to find out what the delta H values are for this, these compounds. We need to use the bond energies. And the bond energies are the energies that are uh, inside a single bond, double bond, or a triple bond of two elements. But I'm looking at this equation and I said, where are the bonds? Do you see them? I'm looking and I don't see any bonds. So if you need to find out the delta H by the bond energies, even though it's one more step, but I highly recommend you drawing the Lewis structures because only the Lewis structures will tell you what you know C2H4 actually looks like, what specific bonds are in the um, C2H4 compound. So in order to answer this question, we do need to draw out the Lewis structures. So pause the video if you want to and try to draw out the Lewis structures for C2H4, O2, CO2, and H2O. We have tons of videos on this channel just designated towards how to learn how to draw the Lewis structures over there, I go through it step by step so that you guys can get more comfortable with drawing them. You could always check out those uh, lessons. So pause the video if you need to. Let's see if your answers matches mine because this will kind of be like a quick inversion. So the first one, I have C2H4. So that means that I have two carbons that are in the middle, because remember, hydrogen is never in the middle, surrounded by four uh, H's. So I'm going to just try to make them as symmetrical as possible. So I have one H here, one H here. It does not matter how you draw the H's. I could have drawn them one up top here, one up top here. Let's, let's maybe do that, right? Because we don't care about molecular geometry here. So we're just trying to make it as easy as possible to just draw the Lewis structure. So I'm gonna draw the other H and the other H here. And once again, it doesn't matter where you draw them. We just have to get down the correct bonds. Single bonds for all H to C's, because hydrogen can only make uh, one single bond. And then carbon wants to have four bonds, so these have to be bound double time. They have to form a double bond. All right, now let's do O2. O2 is just two oxygens bound to each other double time. This one needs the double bond to get that octet. And I'm just going to kind of align this. Let's pull this maybe over there, beautiful. And then this is going to equal CO2. So we have one carbon in the middle surrounded by the two oxygens on either side. And that's pretty, uh, that's, that's a little better. And in this case, we do need the double bonds again to get the octet rule for everyone. And then we have H2O. So we have water, so oxygen in the middle, surrounded by the two hydrogens. I guess I'll put one H and one H. Once again, it does not matter for the bond angles here. Single, single, and the oxygen has the two lone electrons. Okay, so now let me just kind of make this a little bit more 
more better, better. Okay, beautiful. Now, we draw everything out for the Lewis structure. Now we're going to start only taking notice as to what is not on the same side, because that's how we're going to use our bond energies. We got to find out what was broken and what was formed. So I start looking at these CH bonds, right? So the CH bonds, are these on the product side? I don't see any CH bonds, right? So all of these, no more, no more, no more, and no more. They all got broken. So I'm just going to kind of highlight them. Okay, so all those, I'm going to just make a mental note. Those all have to be broken. Now I look at the, even though this is going to be color clashing, but I just want to show you the different uh, colors. There's a C double bond C. Is the C double bond C on the right side or was it broken? Yeah, I don't see a C double bond C. You're absolutely correct. So I'm going to highlight this guy. Okay. Now let's keep going. I have an O2 bond. Is an O2 bond on the right side? No, I don't see it. I see a CO bond, but not an O2 bond. So I'm just going to highlight that one. This has got to go. Literally everything on this side is going. Yay. <laughs> and what's being formed? Well, I see a CO bond, right? That wasn't on the reactant side. And another CO bond. So I got two of them. And then I have the two OHs, right? I have the one OH here and then the other OH over here. Okay, so now let's just write them out. So we have the C single bond H's. We're going to now look at that table. Here I wrote all the bond energies for you guys. So a CH bond is 415. So I have 415 for this one, 415 for this one, 415 for this one, and 415 for this one. So I'm just going to say that I have 415, and maybe I'll write that in red, and I'll say that this one is the CH, because this one is getting a little crazy. So technically I have four of them that broke. So I have 415. Now, this bond is also gone. That's the C double bonded C. And the C double bonded C is 611 kilojoules per mole. I only had one of them, so we're good for this compound now. Okay, we'll do the math in a little bit. I just have the 102 here, right? So 102 is 498. Okay. Now over here, I have one C double bonded O, and I have another C double bonded O. So for my C double bonded O's, inside the one carbon dioxide molecule, I have two of them. So I have to do two times 741. And then the same thing for the water. I have one OH, and I made another OH. So this would be two, uh, 464. Okay, so I'm just going to just bring these up. Okay, so now let's just do the math, right? So we have four times 415. So that's a total of 100, uh, 1,660 kilojoules per mole. And I'll just bring this over. This one, I don't have to add up anything right now. I have 200... 2 times 741, so 741 times 2, I get 1,482 for the total here, and I have two OHs, so 2 times 464, I get a total of 928. Now, I do want a complete total of the ethene, the C2H4, so I still have to do some work because I have 1,660 and I have 611. So the total bonds, the total bond energies that are being broken here, I just have to add those up. So I'll take the 1660 from up top there and plus the 611. So the total that I get 
is 2,000, geez, 2,271 kilojoules per mole. Okay. Now, we have the sums of each atom, or not atom, each compound. And what are we going to do with those? How am I going to get the delta H? I still want that delta H. Well, there's a formula. And that's this right here. We'll just bring it down a little bit. But here is your formula for your bond energies to find the approximate de delta H. So in this case, my delta H for the whole entire reaction equals the sum, that's the symbol, right? This is just the sum, which just means to add. So you're going to add up now all the BEs, the bond energies, BE, for all the bonds that have broke. And remember, the broken ones are always on the reactant side. So I'm going to be looking at the reactant side, and then I'm going to subtract the sum. So I'm going to add up all the bonds, the bond energies of the bonds that have been formed. And formation is always the product side. But now, here's the catch. We did the total amounts per one H2O, one CO2, one O2, and one C2H4. But in my balanced equation, I have three O2s, right? I have three O2s. I have two CO2s. I have two H2Os. So technically, you have two of these, two of these, three of these, and you got one C2H4. So let's just write out these guys. Now I have one of these, and maybe I'll do this in green just so that it doesn't, it's a new color. Okay, so I have one of these. I have three of these. Thank goodness for the balancing. I have two of these and I have two of these. Whip. So for your totals, since you have now multiple of them, you have to multiply them by how many you have. So in this case, since I only have one C2H4, this number will stay the same. But I have now three O2s. So I have to take that 490, uh, 498 and times it by three. I have two CO2s. So I have to take that 1,482 and times it by two. I have to take the 928 and times it by two. And then finally, since we're adding up the whole totals on the sides, total up all the left side, total up all the right side. So this plus this, and then this, the, C, the total of the CO2s plus this. Literally, there's a plus sign in the balanced equation, so you gotta add them up. So let's tally it up, 2,271, so I'm just gonna pull that number, and now I'm gonna say plus three times, and I'm gonna grab the 498, oh boy. We did a lot of math. There was no 498. <laughs> I'm just going to go down 498. That looks good to me. Let's press enter. So the total for the reactant side now is 3,765 kilojoules per mole. Let's do the product side. So two times the 1,482. So that's this plus two times the 928. That looks good to me. Let's press enter. Okay, so we have a total of 4,820 kilojoules per mole. Now we're ready to just use those numbers and plug it in. Delta H for the whole entire reaction equals the bonds broken, which was 3,765, minus uh, the 4,820 uh, kilojoules per mole. And now we're going to get our answer. Delta H for the whole entire reaction is... This minus the 4820, love the TI-84. Whoa, that's a lot of kilojoules. But in the beginning, uh, this was a combustion reaction. And when you think of combustion, you think of fire. <laughs> so, I mean, you're releasing, it's a negative, you're releasing 1,055 kilojoules per mole of heat. Yeah fire. So that's the answer here. Let's color it in and call it a video. 
Okie dokie. Best part of the video. For me, coloring. For you, maybe watching me color. <laughs> it's just, it's just me. Okay. So, uh, we are good to go for this one. Very exothermic. Releasing a thousand, roughly a thousand kilojoules per mole. It's a combustion reaction, so you know it's going to be exothermic because this, you know, produces fire. So, I hope this helps. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel, and I look forward to helping you in future uh, lessons. If you wouldn't mind, tell your classmates, tell your friends about this channel. Just gets the word out there that this channel exists. We also got physics and math videos on the channel at the moment with more subjects in the future. We're so excited. My brother and I, we thank you so much. You guys have been great. You guys rock. Thank you so much for the support. Thank you for being part of the community, and I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Bye-bye.